Welcome back to the show. This is the Bidiangu show and the conversation tonight is about corporate training. What is corporate training? What does it involve? Is it for you, a company or a business? On the spotlight tonight we have Egem. It's a growing company in the industry. Thank you. Uh, maybe we can talk a little about what it, what it is for somebody who's just joining us. Yeah. Uh, well, as we said before, uh, A Game Training and Consultancy is a corporate training and team building solutions uh, company. Uh, we concentrate on equipping people with skills and knowledge to excel at what they want to do. And so we do that in three categories. We do that for corporates. We train staff teams of corporate organizations. We equip them with skills, uh, professional skills and knowledge for them to be able to grow um, and in equal measure grow the bottom line of the company. Secondly, we work with uh, SACO memberships. Uh, some SACOs call us and tell us these are our SACO members. Can you train them on entrepreneurial skills? And so we come into contact even with the Mamamboga. So we train both in the informal and the formal sector. Thirdly, we do career coaching. If you're an individual and you want to grow in your career, you want to scale up the ladder in your career, then we can give you insights on how to grow professionally as an individual. And that's what um, A Game Training and Consultancy does. So any of your clients, they can fit in any of those three categories? Yes. As long as you're a business person or an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. we have a solution for you. If you, if you are a company, mm -hmm. you do corporate for companies. Yes. If you are a circle, yes. you can do that also. Membership training. Okay. Yes, especially in entrepreneurial skills. Okay. And if you're an individual who wants to grow in your career, we do uh, career coaching. Oh, how practical is that or how long does it take for, for, an, for an individual? Sometimes people just have, someone just has an interview. Okay. They have been invited to an interview and they want to prepare for that interview. Okay. It may be as something as small as that. As small as and, that. and we help them to anticipate the kind of questions they'll be asked. Be prepared with information. Do research about the, the company that is going to interview them. Probably even do a bit of makeup on their CV. You know, how do we prepare them for that interview? How do we ensure that they have the best chances to get the job? That's what career coaching is about at one level. On another level, someone may be thinking, I've been working in this company as a customer care representative for years. How can I equip myself or how can I begin to work so that in two or three years I can scale up to being the customer service manager. So we do leadership coaching and career coaching also in that sense. Yeah. Among those three categories, uh, AGM has clients most, which, which, which of the three categories is popular? I think the biggest category is the corporate training. That is the organizations who contact us to train their staff uh, in different areas. We mainly have expertise in uh, business performance, which is sales, marketing, and strategy. Uh, those are the three main areas we do. But we have also um, have people who can train in human resource, in procurement, in administration, and even just basic soft skills, you know, uh, communication skills, presentation skills. Those are things that uh, people need in an organization, regardless of their area of expertise. So we do all-rounded uh, training. Maybe you can talk a little about each of those popular categories that uh -huh. you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, customer service basically is equipping, moving your customers from satisfied to loyal. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's about. Because you just don't want a customer who is satisfied with your services. You want a customer who, no matter what happens in the market, they're stuck with you. And we know some major organizations in Kenya whose customers never leave as much as they complain. Yeah, they complain. And, and I won't name names, you know. We know some in the telecommunication sector. You're always complaining about bundles and everything else, but you never leave. There must be something they've done. There must be a service or something they've done for you because they've moved you from just being satisfied to being loyal. Now you're not interested in leaving them. And that's what customer service training is about. Because as I said, the market is very ripe. Products and services are readily available for anyone. So what are you doing to make sure your customer stays with you? That's what customer service is about. Sales is, is basically equipping sales teams to be able to achieve their sales targets. Okay. 
So it could be trainings around how do you close a sale, negotiating skills, presentation skills, how do you make calls, how do you present yourself. Those are basic skills that are very important towards sales. Uh, strategy, uh, mostly companies have plans that they have for the long term. And we're able to step in, help them develop a strategy uh, for their company and help them be able to create goals and milestones to achieve those strategies. So that one usually takes much more work and it's a much longer process. But those are the three main areas we concentrate on. Um, fourthly, on a smaller scale, we've done some leadership training. Okay. Um, communication skills, presentation skills. A lot of companies want that for their receptionists or for their call centers. How, how are they equipping their people to be able to relate better to clients? Uh, for somebody who's maybe watching and they, they are saying, I know what corporate training is now, but what are the advantages? What, mm. what would make me go for it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, first and foremost, according to research, corporate training in, improves the productivity and efficiency of your staff. Mm. Because when you train them, they feel that you're interested in their personal development. So that grows their efficiency, that grows their productivity, and in turn, that grows your bottom line. Yeah, because if you have staff who are doing their best to work for your success, then your profits will grow. Secondly, n there's no employee who doesn't want staff who are motivated, mm -hmm. staff who have uh, good morale for work, and above all, staff who are well equipped to do what the employer wants them to do. Um, you can train competence, but you can't train character. <laughs> so you, it is better for you to employ a person with character and train them to be competent than to have people who are competent and they lack character. I've seen you brought th those three together, competence, yes. character, and chemistry. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you chemistry and competence are things that, uh, chem chemistry and character are things that can't be taught. Yeah, but competence is something that can be taught. So instead of letting go of your staff members who you feel are not performing, have you given them a chance to learn and mm -hmm. to grow? To improve, their to improve themselves, and that's what corporate training um, is about. Uh, for the two years you've been in the industry, what, what milestones would you say you have achieved? Mm -hmm. I think first, just every client, every new client to me is a milestone. Because every new client is, is a mouthpiece for marketing. Every new client is an opportunity for growth. Mm -hmm. And every new client is putting food on my table. True. Yeah. So for me, those, that, those are my greatest milestones. Being able to have an opportunity to show a new client what I can do for them to empower a new client. I think the second milestone is seeing the growth of the clients that are already there. Their success. Seeing the little successes, you know, seeing uh, this person has now achieved this. I think for me that gives me a lot of great pleasure. The third milestone is even that I'm thinking um, of uh, getting an in-house marketer and administrator. For me, <laughs> for that's a milestone because I'm thinking it means that I want, I've now gotten to a place where I want to free myself mm -hmm. to do more of trainings and to do more of customer service and to leave some of the responsibilities of administration and marketing to, to someone else who is able. Mm -hmm. Apart from that also, how, how do you want to improve yourself or how do you improve yourself? giving the, the, the market a better version of yourself, yeah. a better version of your company? I think the best two ways, one is reading. I try to read as much as possible. Things are changing. It's very important to read from people who have gone way ahead of you. The Richard Bransons, the Bob Collimores, you know, the, the Manu Chandarias, to learn from them. And that content is all over the internet. But secondly, also um, collaborating with other trainers. Uh, rather than take a stance of competition, this is my competitor, so we cannot relate much. I really prefer to collaborate with them because I learn new things from them and they learn new things from me. Always, there's always something you can learn from someone. And so those are the two major ways that I really do my best to grow. You would say there is healthy competition. There is healthy competition. There is also unhealthy competition, especially when um, other companies come and cut your feet off. You know, you go and present to a company and you quote, and then another company comes and quotes lower, 50% of what you've quoted. <laughs> uh, their value may not be the same, but the client sometimes does not understand that. And, and so there's, of, of course, unhealthy competition, and that's something that's 
normal in any business industry. As now people start flooding the market, how, how do you rise above that? Uh, the truth is yes, the corporate training market is kind of saturated. There are a lot of corporate trainers. Um, and I think what's setting one trainer from another is their consistency in innovating themselves, especially in terms of learning methods and being able to reach wide targets. If a trainer can be able to deliver content effectively to a millennial worker and to an old person or an experienced worker, then that is a corporate trainer that has set themselves up for a successful future. Yeah. Speaking of the millennial and the like old generation, what do you do to make sure you tailor make your content to suit the different kind of clients that you have? Uh, we just deliver the same content but use different learning methods. Okay. Um, a lot of our training sessions involve um, very little of lecturing, a lot of asking questions so that the staff teams can come up with their own answers to their challenges, a lot of uh, videos, you know, a lot of group activities and exercises to keep the sessions interactive so that whether you're uh, a new employee or who is younger or a more experienced employee, you're able to get uh, the learning outcomes of the training session. Um, f finally, because our time is really going fast, uh, what is the future of your company? What do you see in the maybe next five years? I think what uh, I'm really passionate about is growing young corporate trainers. Young people who are even fresh from university with a little of experience, people who know what they want to do in life, because I think it's very important that we start creating a, a training platforms, especially in entrepreneurship and the like, professional skills, for even the youth in university. Because work ethic is something you can begin to teach even from high school. Yeah. When you start teaching young people about work ethic, about excellence, about um, managing uh, seniors, yeah. about how to scale up in your career, those are things that we can begin teaching people at a very young age. Yeah. And the best people to reach out to those young people are young trainers. Yeah. And so in the next five years, I hope to have an opportunity to have quite a number of trainers under a game who are young people so that they can reach that market of the youth. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are wrapping up and I hope you've learned something. Corporate training is not just for the big companies. It can be for circles. It can be for individuals. You want to better yourself. You want to go into the market as an improved version of yourself so that you can be able to meet the market needs. Thank you for watching the BD Yangu Show. Same time, same place next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.